Hey guys, even here with the old school apps, and we're starting this video with a bicep shot of Rolly Winkler. It's just him on a great wall of China, flexing his bicep, and he looks huge and hard, really big and very, very, very hard, and with his famous arms. And yeah, this this photo isn't really a news. It's not something that we can talk about for a long time. I mean, I'm sure I can. I can analyze it for like 30 minutes if I wanted to, but that will be boring. We're gonna talk about something else. So this picture, this this photo, got me thinking about where would Rolly actually place at 2020 Mr. Olympia if he has been there and if he looked good, if he was on. So last year, 2019, he was off. He was off with conditioning. He was just watery. I don't know what happened because about one week out of that show, he looked pretty ripped and big and full and everything. He looked spot on, in my opinion, guys. And now this could be just like the magic mirror, you know, great lighting and everything. But usually when you see photos and videos like this, you can make a pretty good conclusion how these guys are going to look on stage. And uh, in my experience, based on this video right here, I would say that if he showed up like this, if he didn't uh, ruin his conditioning completely, he would have won 2019 Mr. Olympia, and then he would come, if he didn't get that COVID or whatever happened, he would come to Mr. Olympia 2020 as a reigning champ. It doesn't really mean a lot, because it's just one victory, it doesn't really mean one victory, it doesn't mean a lot, it's just... You know, one victory, you don't have a legacy to, to ruin if you lose it. So if he looked good, he would win it again. It's a little bit of, a, of momentum, but not much. Uh, so anyways, if he showed up, let's say, he, the way he looked 2018, maybe a little bit improved from that, maybe a little bit bigger, more matured, how would he place in the Mr. Olympia 2020? There were some really good guys. I mean, there was Big Ramy who was on, actually, finally. Not great, he wasn't ripped, but he was on for his standards. Then you had uh, Brandon Curry, who was improved, guys. He was improved from last year. He was, yeah. He was better, his conditioning was better, his legs were bigger, fuller. We also had Phil Heath, who came back. Honestly, 2018 version of Rolly Winkler beats Phil Heath. That's what I think. As far as Brandon Curry versus Rolly, that could go either way. Remy won because he absolutely dwarfed. Brandon Curry in the legs. Would Raw do the same thing? I don't think he would dwarf him that much. Brandon had really good conditioning, so it would be really close. I think Crowley would be battling for the second spot. He would be either second or third. Because, I mean, just take a look at his physique right here. He doesn't have many flaws. It looks good. He was in shape that year. He was big. He was complete. I think second place, most likely, but top three, I think is pretty safe for him if he is on. Okay, next we have a video, a little training video, I think this is Boomerang Effect, of Jay Cutler training arms, training some biceps, and you can get an idea of his physique right now. He looks fit, he looks big, I mean, he, he kept on a lot of size. I mean, he's not big as he was once, but he kept on a fair amount of size, and apparently he didn't have too many injuries, so he's still able to train. I mean, comparing him to his rival, his biggest rival, Ronnie Coleman, Jay's in, Jay's in much, much better shape. Yeah, he's a bit younger, but still, I mean, quite a bit younger. I think the difference is like almost 10 years or something like that. Still, uh, Jay is like looking great at this point. You cannot really see a lot of his physique, but you can see the size of the arms and uh, the, the body fat percent. Also, you can see it on his arms, forearms, calves. And this also makes me wonder, how would Jay Cutler place in 2020 Mr. Olympia if he was on, like, let's say 2009 version of him, which is... I consider his best ever. Me personally, I prefer 2001, but because of the conditioning and the graininess and maturity that he had, he would probably place better uh, with his shape from 2009. Would this conditioning, this size and basically this physique be enough to beat Big Ram in win 2020 Mr. Olympia? Guys, honestly, I think he would demolish everybody, including Big Ramy. I don't think there is much to talk about it. Just take a look at his conditioning and, and this granity kind of look. Uh, the, the, the thinness of the skin and just, I mean, one of the most impressive physiques of all time. In my opinion, after Ronnie Coleman and Phil Heath at their best, it's either Jay Cutler or Dorian Yates. Potentially third best physique of all time, and I think he will just destroy the entire lineup of 2020 and he will win the Mr. Olympia. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. I'm sure you already seen that video of Big Ram when he was younger and smaller, but did you see these photos of Harry Japan? when he was younger and smaller. And take a look at his physique, it was so promising at this point. 
and his arms are his biggest weakness, but back then, because not everything was as big, you couldn't really see it that much. Yeah, it's visible, it's still a weak body part, but it also looked pretty good. And without a beard and with his connected eyebrows, and uh, you know, with just a younger face, younger physique, you wouldn't even recognize him. I mean, without a smile as well. Take a look at him right here, would you even guess that this is Hadi? Without flexing, without smiling, without a beard? No, no, I don't think you would notice, he doesn't look like himself at all. But then when you see this recognizable pose of his, I mean, just a relaxed pose, you can see it, you can recognize the abs, the chest, the quads. He was, I mean, he always had a potential. You could see it miles away. I mean, it was obvious at this point that if he keeps pushing, if he doesn't injure himself, everything goes well, he will be one of the top guys in the world, and right now he is. He's one of the top 3, top 4, top 5 guys in the world, yep. And we'll see how far will he go in the future. Bodybuilding versus classic physique. And this is what this photo is telling us. It's drawing a question. Here you can see the classic physique champion. Uh, he is, you know, a dominant, a dominant champion. Nobody is really getting close to him at this point. Chris Bumstead with his brother-in-law and also a coach. Uh, his coach, Ian Valier, who is the seventh best bodybuilder in the world right now. He just took seventh place in the Mr. Olympia. And uh, they are doing the side chest pose one next to another. And basically, th th this photo right here is uh, asking us a question. How big difference is between these two divisions? Now, obviously... Uh, Ian is not the Mr. Olympia, and Chris is, but uh, Ian is one of the biggest guys as well, so we're, let's talk about the size, simply. And you can see that the, the size difference is visible, but it's not really that big, I mean, aside from arms, everything else is, you know, I wouldn't say close, but it's achievable for Chris to gain that level of, of mass if he ever decided to make a switch to open bodybuilding. Now, of course, he's not gonna do that, why would he? He's doing so well in classic physique. He's one of the, probably one of the most paid uh, athletes in, in in fitness. I mean, in bodybuilding, in competitive uh, bodybuilding, and he's also uh, one of the most uh, not just successful but famous, you know, fitness people in the world. And that's because he's the face of classic physique. He would not change it. And also, he has that kidney disease issue, so he can't really push the envelope as hard as some of the open guys have to, and he would have to push it if he wanted to grow that much, but what I'm seeing here is that it's not really that big of a difference. I don't know, maybe like 20-30 pounds of muscle, if he gained that much, he would be, I mean, he would be in that ballpark with mass, I think. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't really see that huge of a difference. I still think Chris is very big, very muscular. He's also taller, so he's kind of bigger in that way. So, yeah, I don't think it's too big of a difference between classic and bodybuilding. I think most guys, you know, who who actually went back from bodybuilding to classic physique can actually make a, a, a transfer to open bodybuilding if they really wanted to and if they had it, you know, in themselves if they had the ability to push the envelope super hard and if they had that mindset and the wish, of course, for it. So I think in this case right here, I think if you gave Chris one or two good off seasons uh, with, you know, doing everything that open bodybuilders do, he would be in that uh, ballpark with mass. I don't think he would do that well because of his shape. And I think his physique is just made for a classic and I don't think he's even considering it and that he will ever consider it, but... Uh, just, you know, talking hypothetically, I think he could do it if he really wanted to. Chris Baumstead versus Frank Logan. There was a lot of talk about these two guys uh, going one against another and uh, who would place better. And uh, I got this idea to mention this in a video from my friend Fernando Arroyo here. You can see his Instagram page. So he compared these two guys. And let's see, let's see how big difference was there. So Logan took ninth, and uh, Chris won, of course, and Ian Valier also said that uh, Logan would play somewhere between 7th and 10th, so he was kind of generous because he took ninth. And here you can see that these physiques are kind of similar, but what uh, Chris has is more density, more maturity, especially in the legs right there, and I mean overall, I mean he's bigger, he's wider, he's more matured, he's more conditioned, way more conditioned, but the size difference is the biggest, I think, in the legs, because Chris really brought up the legs, Side chest, I don't think he'll I don't think Logan has a chance of ever being better than Chris. Chris is really nailing this pose. Side tricep, it's good for Logan, but Chris just has this crazy chest and crazy maturity and all those lines in chest make his side tricep 
uh, more of a front tricep look amazing. Uh, this is a pose that Frank, uh, that Logan Franklin actually has an actual chance of beating Chris in this pose because Chris has weak abs, he has great vacuum but abs not very good and also his V taper here doesn't look that good but legs again on Chris's side. Uh, from the back, Chris improved so much. This is this is insane how much he brought up the back. So right now, Logan had no chance of beating him, but maybe in the future there is a potential. Chris still has a bit uh, thinner uh, uh, traps, and that's something that he cannot really fix too much. And Logan has good traps. He has thickness in the traps, and you will see that in this final pose. So here you can see the trap, the traps, and the difference between the size of them. And this is also a good pose for both of these guys. And it's funny that they both did it. And they all look very classic, they both look very classic. So I think maybe someday Logan will do well, but this year he had no chance against Chris. He somehow created all this hype about himself, you know, having a chance of actually beating Chris. I don't think he started it, but he used it to his advantage, you know, to gain momentum. It didn't really help him though at the Mr. Olympia too much, you know, being ninth, uh, but uh, ninth in the world in classic physique, that's quite an achievement, guys. Uh, so here you can see, I mean, in the gym he looks amazing, he looks ripped, he looks conditioned, matured, whatever, you name it, he looks very, very good, very, very dominant, uh, potentially like a Mr. Olympia winner or something like that, but on the stage it's a different story, and uh, how does he do it? He, he knows the angles, you know, he's been competing as a math physique competitor for a while, uh, he knows the angles, he can get the lighting right, He's also in pretty good shape, but he is not as conditioned on the stage, you know, as some of the other top guys. Uh, he has potential, still I, I believe that he does, you know, he reminds us of Chris in that way, I mean, uh, he represents classic music very well, you know, he reminds us a little bit of Arnold and, and like uh, maybe Bob Paris and all those uh, classic guys back from the, the 70s, 80s, you know, 90s even, you know, he, he has this hair and everything, so he looks good, he, he has the classic lines, and he knows how to pose as well, he really perfected the posing, he can do some classic poses and make him look very, very classic, so I think he is a potential, a big potential, but it's gonna take him quite a few years to get to the top. Whatever you guys think about whichever part of this video, tell me down below in the comment section, like the video if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe for more videos like this, all the best guys, and keep it old school.